Hello everyone, it's Magdalix21. Good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the first ever vlog on this channel. God help me, I have no idea what I'm getting myself into here and what's going to happen. Already stumbled on all my words, this is fantastic. Do you know what, the best way to start this off, I think I'm just going to gush about my second favourite game of all time. And that is, of course, if you don't already know, is The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Uh, why choosing my second favourite game first? I think there's just a lot more to talk about. So, Wind Waker was released in 2003, and loads of people hated it because it was the... because of the cell shaded graphics. Now, this game, despite in spite of that, this game has aged better than pretty much any game ever made. I don't care what... like, this is all my opinion, but I'm just gonna gush. Like, it's my favourite, and it's my favourite for a lot of reasons, and I'm gonna cover as many of those reasons as I can in the most unscripted, blah blah blah, um, um, uh, fashion. Um, what you're seeing right now is the Japanese version. Um, I have never actually played the Japanese version before. It might just be a setup I've got going on on my Wii that's a bit dodgy, but it actually looks uh, way, way better than I remember. In fact, way better than Wind Waker HD. Uh, spoiler warning, the original was better than the HD, but we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Wind Waker. I actually didn't play... Well, it was a game that I first experienced with my cousin and my brother Elliot. And... My cousin Lewis, he owned the game, and I was very, very jealous. Like, I did ha I had a GameCube, and I think I had Super Smash Bros. Melee in the beginning, and a few other, like, crappy things like Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, which, is, which, in fairness, is a good game, but maybe we'll talk about that some other time. And, yeah, we, we used to basically... I, we used to just, like, borrow games from each other, and I would borrow this one all the time, and funny enough, like, we would have a save... We had, like, sort of, like, a shared save file for Wind Waker, so I would go... Um so far in the game, then we cop then when we saw each other again we'd like take our memory cards with us and just like copy the files over. So I honestly can't remember what the first file name was and God knows if it still exists or not. It probably doesn't because I've lost most of my memory cards and just have one really big one now. Um but yeah, it it it, it took us of I do you know what I, d I don't think we actually sort of abandoned the gate at one point because we got to getting the third pearl, and we had no idea, literally, like, we were too young to sort of think to go and look on game facts, but we, we honestly had no idea how to get the third pearl, we didn't know that we had to, uh, siddle on the wall at the bomb shop to get in the back, and then use the code to get on the pirate ship, not a clue, and we just sort of said, stuff it, we'll, we'll probably never play this again, but then, when I got my own copy of the game a few years later, which is the uh, which I still have, even the disc is almost completely destroyed, and it's got a pre-owned th thing on the disc and on the box. I also won the uh, Ocarina of Time bonus disc because I got the uh, the cool version of the game. Because you know I'm just the best, and I picked it back up, and then I I think I found the solution to go in the back completely by accident. I was just running around one day in the game. I even I honestly did the trip to outset and back so so many times and I just found this on I found the, the solution on Windfall Line complete by mistake and I was just like, oh wow, I can actually progress in the game and I got really into it from there out. Like as soon as the rain stopped it was like wow I haven't seen it like this in so long. It was really, really exhilarating. Then I went and put the pearls in and then yeah, I ca I carried on the game and Oh, I don't think I actually finished the game until, God, it would have been 2005, just before I finished, just towards the end of primary school, probably summer of 2005, and it was incredible. The finale is just so good. I mean, yeah, the game's been out for over 10 years, but I don't really want to go too deep into sport to spoilers, because if you haven't experienced Wind Waker for any any reason, you really, really should, and I would recommend, again, I'm probably going to go into this in a bit, but I would recommend getting the original over HD. Do you know what, let's just, let's just go into that now, I've sort of like covered my origins with the game, but I think the art style honestly looks worse, in fact, just most of the things in Wind Waker HD look worse than they do in the original. The lighting is absolutely fucking awful. It's way too bright, the colours are just completely wrong, and it's just, what the fuck am I looking at? Like, the game did not need a HD remake. Like, look, if, if you put, if I, if I'm actually able to upload this video in 1080p, just look at the goddamn visuals. It is so good. I mean, yes, I'm using a widescreen hack, but Jesus Christ. Like, this game has aged, like, Jennifer Aniston. Like, you wouldn't even suspect it. Like, you could play this now and just be like, damn, this is one hell of a good looking game. I don't care what system you play it on. I... 
as well as that, I think some of the just like the vision. It's it's all just in the visuals. Like the point of Wind Waker is is the way it looks, and if you just like ruin the way it looks, then there's honestly no point. Like yeah, the story in this game is really good. I mean, for what for what's there, I think fast traveling. I'm gonna get crucified for this. I don't like fast traveling. I think the appeal of having the the massive expanse of the ocean just creates an ins- amazingly flushed out and just enjoyable experience. Like it's really calm. Like I would have many many sessions on Wind Waker where I would honestly just keep I'd play the song of passing to make it the nighttime a lot and just just go through the ocean. It's just the sounds, the way. There's like the little wisps of air, just like the sound that the sail makes as you turn the little grr, grr, grr. Like the moon and the stars and just the way the water looks is unbelievable. And when you use fast sailing and change the way the graphics look, it just looks really, really silly. And I just couldn't... I mean, to this day, I still haven't finished One Maker HD because I just don't want to. And plus, you know, you, you can't play HD with the GameCube controller and that's pretty offensive because, you know, it's the fucking GameCube controller and it's the best controller ever made. Um, well, not that I had to tell anyone that because, let's face it, we all knew that already. Thank you, Smash fans. I, yeah, I honestly have played this game so, so many times. I more or less know it inside out, which I'm not going to demonstrate at the end of this video, but uh, you'll, you'll see why when it comes. I am actually someone that finds the Triforce quest not that tedious. Getting the rupees is a pain in the ass, but uh, I actually think it, it gives the game it actually l- gives the game a decent amount of longevity that ex- two extra dungeons wouldn't give it. If you give this game two extra dungeons it immediately gets way too short. It's, it'll be like the DS games again where you pretty much can finish them in like two hours and it's like what's the point? Well, two hours is a bit of an exaggeration but speedrunners be damned. Um, I actually, no, I honestly enjoyed the Triforce quest. It, it, it's, it, I like exploring big, expansive worlds, and because of the ocean and like the amount of things that there are in this game's overworld, it actually makes it more enjoyable. Like exploration is key. Like I, I actually love action platformers with a lot of exploration, and in a way, despite being like an action adventure game, it almost sort of has those elements too. And that's honestly one of the highlights of this game. I mean, not in just the Triforce quest, but just in general, like, this game is just, it's just, for a game that looks really childish and silly, it has so much going for it, and, like, even though, like, I mean, again, with the story, like, it's, it's, it's more, it's, it's slightly less than your typical Zelda story, that the, like, me having a younger brother, the, the, the loss of your sister at the beginning is, it's, it's actually quite gripping, and it really incentivizes you to play on. And even though that gets resolved quite early on, and the typical Zelda stuff takes over, I still think the first half of the game alone is phenomenal. And the second half, while it's still good, feels like a bit of a formality, but I still enjoy it, because you sort of take what you learn, and, you know, that's that's how you become the chosen one, like... If you, if you think about it, like, yeah, the King of Red Lions must sort of know what's going on behind the scenes, but once you've saved your sister, then you sort of know that you're ready to do anything. And you know what you do? You 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 clear the two other dungeons, you go, you go and find the Triforce of Courage, you follow in the hero of time's footsteps, and that's amazing. Like, if it, I think, in a way... It's the like. It's sort of like this incarnation of Link, Toon Link, whatever you want to call him, is I think closest to the player than any other. Like, you're in a way you almost feel inspired by the Link of Ocarina of Time and and I guess Majora's Mask, and you say I want to. And it's like a kid saying I want to be like that. And I think you can live out that dream in this game better than you can in any other. Even though I know that's a bit of a weird concept to get your head around, but honestly. I always feel whenever I play this game that I'm going to achieve something amazing. Like, I am the hero that I choose to be, and I make myself a hero. I am inspired to be a hero, and, oh, it's just, it's immersive. I, like, it's just, I really, really, really enjoy this game. Like, I can't honestly think of anything bad about this game. If you ask me, it is the hands-down best Zelda for pretty much every reason. Like, exploration, hell, replayability, because there's so many different ways ways you can go around the world, like you can collect a bunch of heart pieces, you can sail off and give all the treasure charts, like there's a lot of, like 100%ing this game is an absolute joy if you ask me. 
I mean, it's you sort of need a guidebook at times to know where things are, but hey, sometimes that's that's okay. And when you're actually having fun doing it like I always do, I think you've got yourself one hell of a game. But yeah, I honestly could keep singing these praises, but I don't want to drag this out for much longer, so... Yeah, I, I couldn't recommend this game enough. If you haven't played it, you really should, and if you have, then feel free to play it again sometime, because, you know, if it has been a few years since you've played it, you should you should definitely go back and play it again, because, hell, you might be surprised and find something even you, you enjoy about it even more than I do. But yeah, this has been Maglinks21. Let's see how the editing goes, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the first vlog. Let me know what you think, and if you like, uh, like, rate, comment, and subscribe. Oh, and for the old schoolies, make sure to rate five stars. Peace!